We live in a time where almost anything you can imagine is possible to realize. With this kind of creative freedom, ideas are bound to arrive. And when you have many ideas, you need to organize them. Luckily, there is a solution. The German sociologist Niklas Luhmann came up with a concept called the Zettelkasten. You write your ideas on different notes and you're able to branch them and to expand on them and so on, but all of this would end up in chaos. If there wasn't a good concept, a good system to label them. So you start your thought in one note called one and then you expand on it saying 1a, 1b, 1c. So you know all of these belong to one. Let's make an example. So you start on a note called one, which is about growing potatoes. You want to grow potatoes. So you start with 1a, saying all the equipment you need for your potatoes. 1b, all the uh, growing conditions, where if it needs to be sunny or not. And then 1c, all the pests that you need to watch out for growing your potatoes. So if a couple months later the growing season starts and you actually think, ah, oh, there's this spot and you think something else, you can go to 1B and say 1, and 1B2 and 1B3, talking about the different growing spots you have in your property. Just an example. Um, once a week or once a month you sort all your cards so that you look through them again, you get inspired, you can maybe expand on certain ideas, you know what is there, and you transfer the, the cards from your short-term memory into long-term storage. And this is important because when you just write it down, maybe you, in one moment you think about potatoes, and the next moment you think about 3D printing, and all of these things would get jumbled up if you just keep them that way. But by sorting them, you know, okay, potatoes are at 1 and 3D printing is at 23 or something like that. If you're the analog kind of person that likes handling different colors of pens and drawing certain things and um, using staples and rings and so on, because you would probably keep them on some sort of ring to keep them all together, um, then go for it, go the analog way. I know myself, I would probably lose them or not have them with me when I have a good idea or uh, be too lazy sorting them. Um, and let's be honest, we're in the digital age and there's lots of different apps that can do exactly this kind of jobs for you. All of the apps I'm going to show here are really versatile, so it uh, depends on you which way you want to use them. You can use them for organizing your ideas, you can use them to catalog you, the things you own, you can use them to plan a certain project, you can really uh, make from it what works best for you. Gesundheit. Um, so, Workflow is a special mention. It's super simple. It allows you one list and you can organize yourself with hashtags and uh, have an infinitely deep nested list. Okay, It's quite powerful, but it does not offer the same functionality as the next tool. If you like simple tools, uh, web-based, then go for it. Check out the link in the description. Dynalist is something I really love. I just recently discovered it, but I'm, I'm all about it. So Dynalist is something really cool. It's, it allows you all the same functionality as Workflowy, uh, but even more. So it also has these infinitely deep lists. Uh, it uh, has checklists, so you can tag things off. Um, you can have subtitles. You can have these hashtags as well that we already saw before. You can have due dates, so it tells you what to do when. Um, you can import the things from Workflowy. Uh, it has a mobile app, so for me when I'm on my way to work or if I'm going on a hike or sitting on a toilet or something, sometimes the best ideas come up and then it would be sad that you cannot just write them down.
it's quite cool. You can have the ideas in different colors. You can write your nodes in, in one window so you have a complete overview um, so you don't get lost by other things. Uh, so it kind of enables you really to build your own Zettel custom. Uh, you can also, which is quite amazing, have a graph view. So if you expand on this, you see really what you're all about already. So um, this is really cool to kind of see the state that you're in. The next tool is Trello. Trello is something you might have been working with before already. It is super user-friendly and intuitive, very responsive. It is a digital version of a Kanban board. So uh, you have all these columns, uh, you can add different cards to it. And to these cards, you can then add attachments, so images that are showing up. You can add due dates. So let's see, this one, I'm going to make it overdue from yesterday. Uh, you can add a checklist um, and say finish and so on. You can then check it off. You can add comments to it. And you can, as you see, it's all Ole Müller here. So you can also work in this with a team. This is the only app that I'm presenting today that allows uh, collaboration. Uh, it has an unfair advantage in this point. I will have to look into other team collaboration apps like Asana or Jira or something like that. But even if you're just alone, it's really nice. You see, it's, uh, you can have labels and so on. Um, it also has a mobile app. You can have several boards. Uh, and it's all in all, it's a really powerful tool. I've been using this when I was working as an innovation coach. My team's always asking, why should we use this? Why should we use this? It only makes sense if you're using it when you actually like what you're doing. It doesn't make any sense uh, when you are just doing it in order to do it, you have to see the advantages of it. So for making a Zettel custom, it might be a little bit tedious. You can have links to other cards here, but it might need an index board and so on, but it's a good start. It has been used by individuals, uh, by groups, especially when they have flat hierarchies. Uh, it handles chaos really well if there are rules that are agreed on, and also big companies are using it. Check out the links if you're interested in it. Uh, it's really a nice, nice tool. The last tool that I'm going to present to you is Obsidian. Obsidian is basically your personal wiki. Obsidian is a local markdown-based uh, program which is free to use. Maybe some of you know Rome Research. Uh, this is kind of the offline version. If you want to go online on, on the cloud, you have to pay for it. Otherwise, it's free forever. Uh, in Obsidian, you also can go deep, very deep, extremely deep, uh, deeper than you ever want to imagine. Um, and you can also have circular links. So it is quite powerful. You can have multiple cards on, open. So and you can also have a graph view of your entire uh, organization. This is quite cool because it allows you to see where might be some work still needed. What, what does it look like? Okay, this is this. Ah, okay, you see which ones are where in the process. Um, this whole episode has been scripted in, the, in this program. You can even record voice uh, and so on. It's it's quite cool. I'm really in love with it. It's more for the in detail, last to the deepest detail, down in the deep, very uh, time will stop. Yes, special mentions. So. Workflowy is kind of the same as Dynalist, just a bit more simpler, it doesn't have the same functionality, but check it out if you like uh, simple tools that do not distract you. Also, Windows OneNote has quite some functionality that allows you to um, really uh, create a Zettel custom or use your hands when drawing something. 
I myself will use mostly Dynalist and Obsidian. Dynalist on the go when I'm out and around having ideas, and Obsidian to go down to the deepest level of detail. You know now how to organize your ideas. The only thing left, once you've sorted all your lines and really know what, what is where, is to lift off and start. Thanks for watching! <laughs>